Join me and two others as we talk about our real life experiences about custody, fatherhood, and DNA testing. Meet Mark, a married man currently struggling to see his own child and secure his rightful custody. Here's Branch. He's a man who didn't get to talk to or know his own child for years because the mother wouldn't let him. And then there's me, Emily. I was adopted and never knew my father, so we take a DNA adventure with my test process along this video. All three of us agree that not all DNA stories turn out to be hidden miracles or secrets revealed, but they let us know ourselves and our families. We're asking people to consider DNA testing all babies at birth so fathers get 50% custody and so people know who they really are. Fathers shouldn't have to fight for or pay for their custody. The child is half theirs, right? I shouldn't have to fight to defend my fatherhood. I shouldn't have to deplete my whole family's savings just to like say, hey, I'm a good father. I decided to take a test after asking my birth mom who my dad was after not asking for 30 years. She eventually gave me a name so she knew, but had kept it a secret telling nobody but me until a few months ago. I wasn't mad at her at all, just bewildered at 45 years old finding out who was supposedly my dad. I was comfortable not knowing and thought I'd never know. DNA can stop a lot of questions, unknowns, lies, and cover-ups that happen by peeling back the layers of genetic history one person at a time. When babies are born, they are definitely the mothers, and the men accept responsibility to the child at the hospital by being married or by signing papers saying they recognize they are the father. That paper binds them to the child financially, but only the mother knows that there's a chance the baby really isn't his. Mother has said somebody else is the father, that person raises a child, and the original father doesn't know. Maybe even the new father doesn't know. The child doesn't know. It, there's situations where the mother keeps the secret all the way up until death, and then it comes out later through paternity testing or DNA, somebody's doing an ancestor research. Uh, my daughter was born in Arizona, and that was just to keep the family secret, you know. That happens a lot. I think so. You know, and, well, back in the day, and I mean, way more than my, just my day. Not all families have old secrets and skeletons in the closet that come out by younger family members taking DNA tests, but I'm hearing about it more and more as I talk to people about this subject. Everyone had an identity story, especially adopted people and the ones who found out their dad really wasn't their dad. People's elders hid things they're now finding out years later and sometimes decades later with DNA testing. A lot of dads and grandpas had affairs. Do you know who you really are? I've always been interested in how much DNA plays a role in who we really are. Environmental versus what's inside us. There's so many things I do that my mom's family never understood. I would stay outside from after school until I went to bed just playing around the countryside and river. I wake up in the middle of the night at 3 to 4 a.m. no matter what. That's when I draw, write, think things through. It's my clarity time for some reason. I exhaust myself until I can't go anymore. Then I crash at night. I do everything that way. And those are the things I think that are just in us. They have to be in some way, don't they? Um, I got a text from someone that said, you don't know me, uh, but are you the Branch Allen that uh, went to River Falls High School? I said, yes. And she said, well, I'm your daughter. So um, I was surprised. I'm, I'm thankful for Facebook, if for no other reason than this stuff can happen, that uh, people who haven't seen each other for a long time or have never seen each other can get together. So anyway, ever since then, um, she, she and I talked, uh, you know, birthdays and Father's Day, that kind of stuff. And one of the interesting things that she said to me was, I've always wanted to be able to call somebody dad. And, uh, that you know, um, so we open up this kit and it's got the stuff on the back. We have to activate 
You send back, it comes in this nice little box. There's the test, it's a spit tube, just like we had to do for COVID at school. Here's the little plastic thing to put the stuff in. Take that out. My code. We can follow with this code, the process. So I haven't ate or drank for over an hour now, instead of just 30 minutes, it's been over an hour. And that is how hard I work at school. I have snacks. That first thing I did was come out and eat some Skittles with some kids, so. Open it up, here's this, I'm gonna scan it after. Start spitting, until I get spit up to this little line. First class package return service. Go to Ancestry, give me my results, please. Ancestry kit. Ah, won't fit in the mailbox. Ah, collection times, you're not collecting mine. Trying this again. This might be able to fit into something in there because it won't fit into the blue thing outside. I just want to raise my two kids. That's all I want now. I'm a father. I wanted to be domesticated and I wanted to live a house and have the American dream. And it's been taken from me. And now my very basis of fatherhood are like, I have to defend it. It doesn't default to me, it defaults. The mother said this. When I took my first DNA test, the waiting period was to be six to eight weeks. That time was insane, awkward, and frustrating because I supposedly knew who my dad was. When my birth mom told me, I searched him up online looking for a photo of him or something. But there was way more. There was a flood of information on him and my grandma. She was a singer. I pushed play on one of the videos and it was definitely my dad. He has my eyes. Or I have his. I was still waiting on the DNA results, but I just knew. There's movie, documentaries, and videos of my grandma and my father's family so I could see and watch them while I waited. My grandma talked, moved, and said so many things like me it was kind of creepy. My sister's a country singer too, and she has habits like I do when I watch her move and talk on camera. It was pretty cool to be able to see all that, but nobody wanted to interact with me when I emailed or tried to communicate through phone, messages, or social media. I didn't know what to do. Then the fifth week of waiting, my test came back invalid. It was horrible. I had to start again, and it sucked. I spit and did the whole process over as soon as I could. I waited more patiently this time, because I was expecting to be invalid again. Five weeks later, the email came in, and I got my real results. He is my father. My first and only close match is his baby sister, with 28% the same DNA as me. My second match is his aunt. I was amazed at the enormous family on that side with over 46,000 matches, more than 4,000 being four cousins or closer. My thumb just kept scrolling and scrolling, there was no end to the list. My head was spinning because it was more than I imagined. For some driving reason, I had to tell at least one of these people that I exist. So I wrote a letter with photos and I sent it to my sister, my cousin, and my auntie with my DNA results. A couple people responded so far, but I still don't know if my dad wants anything to do with me because I'm one of seven or eight kids, all by different moms. I wonder how many more siblings I have out there and if they'll have a DNA test. This made me randomly ask men if they'd want to know about a kid they didn't know about yet, and would they want to be involved in their life. Every man I asked said yes, and a few said what's happened to them, and they shared their stories. Some have had bad experiences because of the mothers, and some have had wonderful meetings with new family members. Everyone has their own situation. Please DNA test all babies at birth so fathers get 50% custody and people know who they are. There's somebody out there who loves you and you don't know it, wants to be with you and you don't know it. So. Thanks for sharing. Yeah.